All right, before we start delving deeper into geometry problems or looking at uh, making larger grasshopper definitions, I would like to take a closer look at the architecture of a grasshopper component because it will be something that will be very important for us to understand how it works, but also for you in the future when you're not watching these tutorials to try to learn and try to understand how new components that you may find down the road how to learn how they work and how to learn how to use them. Um, so as we said before, components have three main parts. They have the left hand side, which are the inputs. They have the middle part, which uh, gives us, so they have the left part, which are the inputs and over the inputs, we can hover with the, with our, with the mouse. And then we get this tooltip that is telling us the name of the input what it's requiring and it's showing us the, um, the hexagonal icon that is telling us what type of input it's requiring. So for example, as we said before, this has this icon that says 0.1 and if we go here to primitives, we can see that this corresponds to a number with decimal part. Um, the same for Y and the same for Z, right? Um, if we have to remember that we can uh, we can right click on top of these inputs so that we can access some options inside of those inputs. So for example, we can choose how the wire that comes into this um, input looks like. So by default, we have a thick black wire, but this can be very thin, or we can use a hidden that I very, I don't, I don't really like doing this because I like seeing where those cables, where those wires come from. But if you ever click the component, this will show up solid. So if your, comp your definition is very messy, I recommend that you do faint um, and that you only use hidden for like, in like really, really bad scenarios, okay? I don't think that's a really good practice. Um, other options that are available here is that you can disconnect this cable by going to here and disconnecting this input, the slider. So you can now detach and uh, I can reconnect this again, for example. There are a bunch of other inputs that are coming here, reverse flattening, blah, blah, blah. We will see what these do farther down the road, as well as what these ones do. This is not very, um, this is not very helpful right now. And you can also access this small help that gives you uh, a breakdown of what this component needs as an input. In this case, it's telling us that it needs a double parameter and double is uh, a computer science term for a number with decimal part that has a lot of precision. It's just that it, okay? Uh, so double precision floating point values, like you can see here. Same goes for the center of the component. At the center, if we hover, we will get the name of the component. We will, and this will be the name that we can use to double click on the canvas and bring it up. So construct point, for example, you can see, I can access that through here. Um, and then um, as I right click here, I can see some options that are available to me. So for example, you can see that this component right now has a preview on the viewport, right? So if I move this around, you can see that we have a preview of this point here on the viewport. And I will explain later what the relationship between previews and geometry is. But for the time being, we can see that this is showing, this point is showing here. And we can see that when I click this component, this preview turns green. This is very useful when we have a definition that has a lot of components. Uh, we can click on each one of the components and see which geometry corresponds, which geometry on the Rhino viewport corresponds to that geometry that we just clicked, to that component that we just clicked. Um, but if our definition grows very large, we can actually choose to turn off certain. So for example, we can choose to disable the preview. So now it's still working. It's still doing its thing. It's just not showing up on right now. And we can turn the preview on again. Um, and uh, the same for enable, we can choose to just completely disable. So now it's not showing and it's also not working. It's like turn off. So we can turn it on again, um, like this. And then last but not least, we can see that on the right hand side of the component, we have the output. Um, the output is telling us what the component is giving us. So a point through its coordinates and the icon is also telling us what type of data that is. Remember that white cross, if we go to geometry, we can see that it is a point. Okay. 
Um, this kind of looking at a component, reading the inputs, reading the, what the component does. So for example, something that is very important as well is we can right click on the center, click on help, and then we get a pop-up with description of the component. This constructs a point given some X, Y, Z components, uh, which have to be a number, a number, and the output is a point. Okay. So this is a very simple component, but it's, um, it's a way of, it's a way of reading a help text that describes what the component does. Uh, and then the output also being very careful about the understanding what types of data this component is outputting, because as you will probably see very soon, um, the types of data that a component matches, their component outputs needs to match the input where you wire that cable to into the next component. Okay, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's take a look at that in a second. Um, but this idea of reading through the inputs, the description of the component and the outputs and understanding what the component does and what data it needs to work with and what type of data it gives as an output is very important because it's a technique that you will need to use to understand any component that you may want to explore. Because uh, in this course, we're not going to go over all the components and I'm actually going to invite you, the viewer, to, um, to experiment on your own. To just go ahead and be like, oh, let me just go to curves and figure out uh, what kind of components are there. Uh, oh, circle three points. What does this do? Uh, well, it creates a circle defined by three points. So what are the inputs going to be? It's probably going to be A is going to be one point, B is going to be another point, and C is going to be another point. And you see that the three icons are giving us that. Uh, and then the output is going to be C. It's going to be the resultant circle. And I can see that this icon has like a ring on it. So if I go here to geometry, I can see that this ring looks like a circle. So P, what is it going to be? The plane in which this component is, um, in which this circle is contained. And I know that that is a plane because if I go here to primitives, uh, that icon looks like this one here, the plane. And R is going to be the circle radius because since we are giving it three, no, three points, we don't really know the radius of that circle. So it's output here in the form of a number. Okay, so now all of a sudden, I know how to use this component. And I know that if I build, for example, this and another one, and I gave this like some random values here to the three points, etc. right now I have three points. And I know I have three points in space. And then if I connect each one of these three points to A, B, and C, I'm going to get one circle in three dimensional space that is going through all these three points. And if I connect panels to C, that one is going to be, this is the circle. And then second is going to be, this is the plane that is containing that, is containing that circle. And then third, is going to be this radius, the radius of the circle that I just generated. Okay, so that made things very easy for me to understand. Um, so I very, very strongly recommend that without fear, you're not going to break anything. Grasshopper is not going to crash. Uh, without any fear, you just go ahead and start exploring. So go to surfaces and go to primitives and see what kind of primitives can you do? Oh, I can do cones, I can do cylinders, I can do spheres. Oh, but I can do three types of spheres. I can do sphere based on a base plane and a radius. I can also do sphere based on four points. And you can see that the icon is slightly different. Uh, so this is going to be very similar to what we just did with the circle, but just with an additional point. So for example, this one here, for instance, I don't know. And I'm going to plug this here, here, point two, point three, and point four, and boom. I have a, I have a, I have a, a sphere that is going through those three points there, and is and the output is the, sphere, the center of the sphere, the radius of the sphere, and the surface. This this icon here is the same as this one, surface. So you can see that the output is a surface in the form of this sphere. Okay, um, so go to curves go to vector and explore planes, explore points, explore vectors, 
uh, go to curves and see in primitives how many types of different curves can you generate, how many types of splines can you generate, go to surface and go to freeform and see that you can do extrusions, you can do pipes, you can do revolutions, where are revolutions? Uh, revolution, here, ray revolution, normal revolution, boundary surfaces, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, and just by carefully reading through the component what type of inputs and what type of outputs it's giving you, then you will get a very, very good sense of, um, of what possibilities in terms of geometry manipulation Grasshopper is giving you. And then uh, you will start learning, uh, you will start building up a mental toolbox about what operations can you do. Okay, so remember always read the description of the component, what it does, read the inputs, what type and what kind of data that component needs to work and what is it giving you as an output. What type of output is giving you and what type of data is coming from it. Okay, very, very important to learn uh, Grasshopper on your own.